Hi, I'm Jeff with Nova Space, and on today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about satellite communications, specifically the broad three categories that satellite communications falls into, which are ultra high frequency, super high frequency, and extremely high frequency. And there's characteristics to each one of those bands that makes them useful for different applications. So we're going to use our communication satellite story from the Nova Space Professional course to highlight these differences and explain what those different bands of satellite communication are used for. As I mentioned before, SATCOM in general is broken up into three different bands. Ultra high frequency, or UHF, super high frequency, SHF, and extremely high frequency, EHF. So before we get too far into defining these different categories of satellite communications, it's important to understand how they are related to each other in the spectrum. And the real crucial bit of information to understand is that when you're looking at these, these bands on the spectrum, UHF has the lowest bandwidth of these, these portions of the spectrum. As you move up to SHF, you have three times the bandwidth in SHF that you have in UHF. And just like the relationship between SHF and UHF, EHF has three times the bandwidth that SHF has. And why this is important is because the more bandwidth you have, the more data you're able to pass over your signal, as well as that extra bandwidth gives you more room to assign different frequencies to different users and get, get more users into that band of SATCOM. So first off, we have UHF, also referred to as narrowband, which falls between the 300 megahertz and 3 gigahertz portion of the spectrum. UHF is characterized by its longer wavelengths when compared to SHF and EHF, and its relatively inexpensive user terminals when compared to the other two bands. This longer wavelength allows for things like communication on the move, uh, where you don't have to have as precise antenna pointing as you would with, say, an SHF or EHF terminal. A drawback of this band of SATCOM is that it is very low data rates when compared to the others, and it's also extremely negatively affected by solar activity in the atmosphere, referred to as scintillation. Moving on to super high frequency, SHF. SHF, also referred to as wideband, occupies the 3 to 30 gigahertz portion of the spectrum. SHF is an extremely attractive option for satellite communications because not only can you get much higher data throughput compared to UHF, it also falls in kind of a sweet spot of the spectrum where you're getting minimal solar and atmospheric effects on your signal. So whereas UHF is extremely negatively affected by solar activity, EHF is extremely negatively affected by atmospheric activity. So SHF kind of falls in that middle spot, that sweet spot, that makes it a very attractive option for SATCOM users. And then finally, we'll talk about EHF, or protected band, which falls in the 30 to 300 gigahertz range of the spectrum. So EHF came around as a result of the Cold War, and it was designed to communicate in a post-nuclear event world. So if the United States and the Soviet Union had actually come to blows in the nuclear, nuclear arms race, and detonation of multiple nuclear warheads would have caused effects on our atmosphere similar to that that we get from the sun. And basically, all other traditional forms of satellite communications would be extremely ineffective. So EHF and its extremely small wavelength is able to penetrate that nuclear scintillation environment to pass communications in extremely critical times. Now that has kind of gone to the wayside as we move into our modern application of EHF, so much like SHF has triple the bandwidth of UHF, EHF has triple the bandwidth of SHF. So you're able to get, theoretically, incredibly high data rates in EHF. Um, however, user terminals are typically very expensive, and also the signals are negatively affected by rain attenuation. So there's a lot more atmospheric absorption when it comes to EHF than SHF. But uh, nonetheless, it is still used for many military applications, as well as uh, now some emerging commercial applications. So that was an extremely brief overview of how satellite communications is organized into three bands, UHF, SHF, and EHF. If you're interested in learning more, please visit NovaSpaceInc.com and check out our catalog of professional development courses related to space. And as always, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.